Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this lesson, we are going to focus on how to change the apparent speed of a song without doing anything to the tempo. So as you may know, whenever a song gets faster, we just speed it up. For example, a metronome could help with that uh, demonstration. This is a metronome on 120, slowing it down, 4, head goes slow. And then speeding it up. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is kind of like the underlying pulse. The tempo, as we call it. And ba way back in the day, they would use Italian terms and they still do in classical music, like lento or presto. Lento is on the slower side, presto is on the faster side. Then you can say prestissimo, which is very fast. Most conventional pop music will end up being... At this speed, this is 120 beats per minute. And to give you an idea of the, the speed of this, this is going double the flow of a clock. So a normal clock will move in 60 beats per minute, which is this. Okay. And if we double that, we get 120 beats per minute. So this is tempo. Tempo is the rate of flow or the speed of the beat. Now, what I'm going to do is make the entire lesson one tempo or try to just imply one tempo throughout while making it feel like the tempo or the speed is changing. So there are a few tricks which musicians do, actually mostly drummers. Drummers do this and we then learn from various drummers, be it actual drum kit players or tabla players or mridangam players or anyone out there who plays rhythm instruments and yes over time the guitar the banjo the piano have all kind of realized that yes we can make the audience move differently or seem that the song's getting faster or slower pulling it back or you know driving it forward in terms of the illusion of speed when the tempo is not really changing. So in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to five strategies to adjust the apparent speed of the song but without changing the tempo. Before we get started, it'll be awesome if you can consider hitting that subscribe button somewhere there and turning on the bell icon for regular notifications. Okay, so the first thing, point number one would be half time regular time and double time okay so regular time if i have to play over this click over this metronome let's say i'm going to go at uh, 120 which is our usual default dum, 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 one or let's go a bit slower maybe 100 three four this is nice dum. so if you take a drum groove which goes over this you know doop touch doop touch doop touch doop so one and two and three and four and if I'm counting quavers or eighth notes one and two three the snare drum is going to hit at the one and two and three and four and one and two so this strategy of uh, sort of uh, of regular time double time and half time involves the hit of the snare drum okay so one and two and three and four and one this is regular three and four and one and two and three and now if this slows down one and Again, I said slows down, but the tempo didn't slow down. It's just the snare hit points. One and two and three and four and one and two, three, four, one and two and three, four. Doop, 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 and two and three, four and one and two and three, four and two. And coming back to regular time now. And three and four and one and two. One, two. So there should be a hit at the two and four or the whereabouts of two and four. Two. Regular. With eighth notes and half. And the 
double time would now make the snare hits to be quicker. That's regular. One and two and three and four and verses. One and two and two and two four and two and four and at the eighth note and one and two and three and four and one two two. You can do a lot of dancey patterns around this, and you can just look at a simple drum groove. You know, so if if I just play the metronome back again, this is hundred. Dooch, touch, dooch. Snare, kick, snare. One and two, three and four and one, two. Verses half. Do, do, da. The hats still go. One and two and three and four and but the snare drum will be at the three. Do, do, da. Do, do, da. Do, 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 da. Half time. Do, do, da. Verses. Do. Regular time. Snare, kick, verses. Fast time or a double time, so to speak. Now, if you have, to, let me try and demonstrate all this on the keys. Regular. Sort of like a rock song. of rock songs we tend to half the time to make it a bit more impactful and so one and two and two. that's your fast or your double time and four and one and two and three and Probably you'll have a tambourine in there doing 16. You know? So that's one way to kind of change the tempo of the song or change the speed of the song. Tempo is the wrong word because I'm not changing the tempo, but yet I'm changing the apparent feel of the song. It's getting, it feels like, I think a, a, an untrained musician, just a lover of music would just say, hey, it got faster at the bridge or hey, it got slower at the chorus or it went back to normal in the riff or the verse. So it gives you that feeling, but the tempo is still the same. So like that, there are a few more strategies. The next one will be with accents. So the way I would explain this on the piano would be just with an arpeggio. So if you take maybe um, a, a G minor, just playing in this way. Now, if you observe what the cycle is, dun, 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 dun. it's starting from the high note and coming down in a nice kind of cyclic manner. High, middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, middle, high, middle, low, middle. So it gives you a very repetitive, cyclic, predictable sound. So the point I'm trying to make here predictable or repetitive monotonous is also considered slower relaxed so you feel like it's getting slow while the same speed but with a different orientation of notes even though the tempo is the same just feels a lot more busier I guess that could be the word so what did I do here? I'm playing a different phrasing. So that'll be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. So if you take just a simple, okay, let's just change the chord to maybe E flat. That's your normal arpeggio. But if I do three, three, two, Three, one. You can also call this as thresio. A little bit faster. Change the chords a bit. Now 
Now if you played the same song like this it do not it do not have any energy I feel It would actually sound a lot more relaxed and lazy versus the original way No 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 Okay, so that's three, three, two accent, but you can do so many things. You know, you can do. Those are the best days on. Tuck it, tuck it. Now, if Brian Adams had done this, again, it's like the lazy sixteenth note feel versus the busy rock feel or the groovy rock feel with energy. the more relaxed non accented way of playing this phrase or this arpeggio pattern okay so that's one more way to kind of change or alter the flow of your song or the energy of the song busy versus lazy the next approach is very simple you take a pattern which is based out of eighth notes eighth notes divide the beat into two equal units so you take any pattern maybe i'm going to go to an uh, an f major chord and look at eighth notes do do 3 and 4 and And let's look at a few hit points. Maybe one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. What are my hits now? And two and three, four, one and two and three. We call this the tresio. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Speed it up. Okay now what's happening in this hit point 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 so the first 1 and 2 and there's a separation of a dotted crochet right 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and then another dotted crochet to take you to the 4 uh, or uh, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and and then a crochet so dotted crochet dotted crochet crochet dotted crochet dotted crochet dotted crochet dotted crochet so what is the equivalent or what makes what is going to make dotted crochet dotted crochet crochet faster okay and then you'll have two of those in one cycle so dum ch dum ch dum dum ch dum ch dum will now become a dotted quaver another dotted quaver and then a quaver not dotted crochet dotted crochet and crochet dotted quaver which is a eighth note So dotted eighth note, dotted eighth note, followed by a eighth note. So that'll be one ta ta dum ta ta dum ta ta. So now you have to access your sixteenth note subdivisions. One e and a two e and a three e a four e and a one e and a two e versus one e and a two e one e and a two e and a three e. Chik boom chik dum chik ta ka dum. So slow tresio. Chik dum chik four and one. And three verses fast. Doom, tack, doom, doom, tack, doom, doom, tack, doom, doom, tack, doom, doom, tack. Okay, let me just play it on the keys. This is the fast tresio or the dancey tresio versus slow. One e and a two e and a three. Kaboom, boom, boom. Na 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 wo 
Okay, so just altering the thresio speeds or whatever pattern you had in the fast way becomes slow. So two fast become one slow or one slow becomes two fast. That's a simple way I would imagine it. You can use that in the same song. It's very usable. It's not just a, a geeky thing to talk about. You can actually use it in an actual song like I showed you here, you know. Eighth notes. And four and one and two and three, four and one and two and three and four and one and and then and then the dum 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 bum 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 songs a lot more busier, and a lot of people out there are going to say, oh, the song got faster here, but it didn't. The tempo was the same. The fourth strategy I have for you is basically same rhythm, <clears throat> but different pulse. So if you take, let's say. Okay, let's just keep it simple. Let's take a arpeggio again, uh, maybe an F minor. I'm just playing sixteens. Now on the left hand, focus on just a semi brief. Two, three. Four, which is a whole note lasting four counts. Now, if you just move this to the next league, which is half, there's some motion now, some more energy versus the pulse now, which is crotchets, quarter notes. Moving with the head. <clears throat> right hand is pretty much the same. Three, four, but the left hand's moving in the pulse. What if I now do eighth notes in the left hand? <clears throat> Lot more en energy, right? And to build up the chorus, play sixteenth notes. Versus the normal pulse. Eighth notes. Quarters, crotchets, sixteens, <clears throat> so that's the same rhythm in the right hand but a different pulse or a different like consistent flow of notes which that which the other register is propelling forward so it started with very lazy whole notes which kind of sounds very uh, assertive or very diabolic sometimes uh, and then the minim slowly builds up uh, and then you go to crotchets which is at the head speed of the listener then you go to eighth notes which is now very busy and then 16th notes which is absolutely like absolutely absolute chaos going on or a build up so you can really change your energy of the song but your audience's head even they won't know it will continue moving the same way okay guys so i have one more very interesting way which i use a lot to change the apparent time feel of the song would be a developing a polyrhythmic feel so a polyrhythmic feel would be two rhythms so let's just take a single note g just sing and just play it there and move our head with it now if i divide this particular note by two it's just normal quavers now if i do semi quavers it's fine it sounds a bit normal let's now do quavers in the left hand shall we what if 
instead of doing semi quavers in the right hand now we do triplets so i'm doing quavers eighth notes in the left hand and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 3 4 so because there are two different divisions of the pulse one hand is dividing by 2 the other hand is dividing by 4 or in actually 3 you're getting a very busy energetic feel okay that's the polyrhythmic feel so if you again go back to g 1 2 and now let's say in my mind i just go 1 and 2 or 1e e and 2e e and 3e and 4e e and 1e e and 2 and just try and develop different rhythms 1e e and 2 Now this is a three in the left hand and a four in the right hand, right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. Verses one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. In the left hand. so that polyrhythmic feel can definitely add energy to your music right guys so we've looked at five options to change the time feel the energy or what the audience might think is the speed or the tempo of the song which it is not don't tell them that would be half time double time versus regular time then using accents and chasing changing your phrasing what was once four meets four meets four meets four can become three meets three meets two meets three meets something else that irregularity makes it interesting then we have eighth notes versus 16th notes so you take the same pattern which was once in eighth notes uh, one and two and three and make it one e and just by reducing or crunching the note value one slow is too fast or too fast is one becomes one slow then same rhythm whatever you're playing but with a different pulse perspective so either slow pulse the or a drone which is just a semi brief or the eighth note or the 16th note pulse or even a dotted pulse which we can get into later and then finally a polyrhythmic feel where you have two meters or two patterns or two time values going in both hands maybe a 3 there and a 4 there and so on and whatever i told you is not necessarily just for the piano you can apply this just as a musician in general i think right guys hope you found the lesson useful supplementary notes are waiting for you on our patreon page and if you'd like to learn rhythm scales chords intervals and music in general and grow as an all-rounder in music do consider heading over to nathanielschool.com filling up a form and we can customize a semester which works best for you even if you are an absolute beginner you can learn with us from ground zero or if you've had some prior training and if you'd like to learn some specific things like theory or composing or production you can write to us and we can try and take it forward for you right guys thanks a ton for watching the video cheers